Our next speakers are uh, Emma, Emma Safika and Caitlin Stubner. Um, and they're gonna tell us a little bit more about education in classes. And I'm also super excited to introduce uh, fellow ladies that are in the tech world of what they're doing. So thank you. Thank you, we're really excited to be here. Um, this is a really, really cool event, and I attended last month knowing that we were going to speak today, and when we were done, I was like, I have to get funnier, like, <laughs> today, because that was amazing. So, hopefully you enjoy what we have to talk about. It actually ties a little bit into what uh, the Creator Kid President talked about a little bit a while ago, so um, I hope you can make that connection. I'm Emma. And I'm Caitlin. And we are two former public school teachers uh, who really like to talk about education. Just ask these people sitting up here. Um, why? Because it's important. We're not going to lecture you on why it's important. Raise your hand if you don't think education is important. <laughs> that is what I thought. Because you all got up early to listen to two girls you've never heard of talk about it. So I think it's a pretty safe bet there. Um, we actually asked our group of creative friends recently what they'd like to know of more in regards to education, and they asked a lot of good questions, because you as creative people are always thinking. You're quick, you're smart, and we want you to know that we are not political experts, and we don't have the answers to all of those questions, but we do have a great vested interest in it, and we think you do too. So we're really excited to find out more about it with you. So before we dive into the major talk, we're going to take a look at the educational landscape of Nashville. And we're going to do that by following one of my former students, Micaiah. She's the one in the middle jumping with her shoes off. That's also me when I was 23. Um, so, woo. So, um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> Micaiah is the product of a lot of state initiatives to make education better for those who were born into the wrong zip code. She started her educational career at an East at Nashville Elementary School in 2004 when No Child Left Behind was in full force. We're going to quickly dive into some of these like big education words that people talk about. So, No Child Left Behind was a national law that requires states to establish measurable academic standards in order to receive federal funding. So the states must test their students on the standards, ooh, and schools must make average yearly progress, and we call that AYP. Um, at her school, Micaiah passed through each grade barely proficient. And we test her proficiency based on a test called TCAP. So TCAP is the Tennessee State Test to measure those standards required by AYP. When Micaiah graduated, her school had not met AYP that year. And when she graduated, she went into middle school unprepared, or what we like to call not on grade level. In sixth grade, she entered a charter school and came to me. A charter school is different than a public school in that you get private and public funds to support a charter that you decided to open. Um, charter schools tend to focus on what we call college readiness, and so they tend to be academically rigorous. However, Micaiah's charter school was not that academically rig rigorous, and it was actually closed two years ago but it did not close in time for Micaiah. In 2011, she came to me, she was reading on a fourth grade level in seventh grade, and that actually is above average for a lot of our students in Nashville. And we had just won Race to the Top funding. So Race to the Top is a national grant awarded to Tennessee, and we got $501 million to use over four years to improve our schools. Memphis and Nashville were the target regions. Um, when Micaiah graduated, she went to a high school in West Nashville. That high school is called a Metro Nashville Priority School, which means it is in the bottom 5% of schools performing in the state. So what does this mean for Micaiah? It means that she's attended a failing school her entire educational career. Her future is the fallout of 18 years of initiatives that are not working hard enough or fast enough 
to make a difference in her life. This is a truthful look at what schools in Nashville are today. But not all schools are bad. So what makes a good school good? Teachers. And that's what we're going to talk about. Usually this is when some people start to point fingers at teachers. They vilify them, they blame them for the problem, but soldiers are only able to fight wars with weapons they're given. And teachers are only able to teach with the resources that their government funds allow them unless they get creative. So, during actually a recent NPR TED Radio Hour, creative education innovator Ken Robinson spoke on how schools kill creativity. He told specific stories about the diverse and dynamic nature of intelligence, how the school system is predicated on academic ability. It came to meet the needs of industrialization. But now our needs lie in educating the whole being of a child, to use imagination wisely, to prepare them for an unknown future where, the, um, where academic inflation causes degrees to mean less and less. So how do we fill the gaps left by failed uh, or ineffective government programs and funding age at college prep and standardized testing? Closing the achievement gap, as it's referred to, falls on the shoulders of teachers. They are the implementers. How many of you consider yourselves teachers? You can raise your hand. Okay, that's excellent. So quite a few of you. How many of you are public school teachers? That's what I thought, because they'd never let you out for something like this on a Friday. <laughs> it's actually really natural for creative types to be drawn to teaching. In essence, it's sharing ideas and guiding people into new paradigms of thought. I remember to teach at the, at, uh, the desire to teach at a very young age, along with, I'm sure, many of you sitting out in the audience. I was drawn to music, piano lessons, school band, choir, uh, and my own personal musical pursuits. That's, that's me in marching band. That's a mellophone. Yeah, <laughs> winner, okay. Um, but the real art form that I was drawn to was teaching music. So it was a no-brainer when I went through a music education program and went to teach general music, band, and all kinds of things at, in Kansas and in Oklahoma in public schools. But my greatest teaching moments were where I could be most creative. I had this group of first graders my first year who were struggling with the difference between singing voice and speaking voice, which is a huge first step in early music education. So I came up with this idea where I would get in front of the room and I would drink this potion that would turn me into a robot that would do anything the kids told me to do. You see where this is going? It's a great idea. As long as it was in their singing voice. So I would just like, robot in front of these kids and I would stop in front of them and they'd have me do all kinds of things like do some push-ups which is embarrassing but worked or play the drums which oh, was more embarrassing but I did it anyway so one day I was like roboting in front of these first graders and I heard a kid lean over to his friend and go if she's been a robot this whole time is that why she's so white <laughs> <laughs> But I stayed in character, and I kept on going. So I stopped in front of this kid, feeling a little hurt. Stopped in front of this kid that I thought would be a safe bet. I rarely hear from this kid. He's quiet. I was like, he'll be easy. But he goes, stand on your head and count in Spanish. <laughs> so now I'm at the front of the room basically doing somersaults, because standing on my head is a little bit pro problematic. But I've told them that the robot can do anything that they sing to it, and I'm just shouting in Spanish, and all my kids are giggling and they're having a great time, and that's when my principal walks in with a school board member. <laughs> but I got creative and we talked our through it, way through it. And when I visited that school last spring, three years after I left, there were fourth graders still talking to me about the singing voice robot, asking me where I'd put that potion. So creativity sticks. And I was lucky because I taught music. Music is art, it's inherently creative. I got to spend most of my time coming up with new ways to bring students into this wonderful, musical, magical world that I had created for them. Teachers are the creative caretakers of our youth. What students learn is often already decided for them and attached to funding and test scores and political mandates which take a lot of power and time to change if they need to. But how they learn is still up to the teacher and there is much room for creativity. 
I recently had a conversation with one of the most fantastic AP English teachers I've ever met. And we were talking about Common Core, which if you have not heard of Common Core, first of all, wake up, it's everywhere. But it is a recently uh, nationally adopted set of rigorous, rigorous testing standards and is the subject of many heated educational debates. He, when I was talking to him about this, quoted Mark Rosewater, for those of you not in the know, the creator of Magic the Gathering. Lots of things to say from that guy. And he said, restrictions breed creativity. Teachers are the last line of defense against the layers of bureaucracy and standardization that just snowball down and land on our students in classrooms. Teachers not a set of standards, have the choice to teach and reteach and reteach the same things over and over again, or to lay a foundation that will stick and allow for new things to come in into education and beyond. Teachers, not government money attached to standardized test scores, can make daily decisions that affect a child's learning. It's not an easy job either, either creating and guiding the future of society. Every teacher has stories of both successes and challenging moments. I've written a few for you up on my blog if you want to look at those. <laughs> but Tennessee is in the national education spotlight, and Nashville teachers are working to make schools better. In order to nurture the creative spirit of the teacher and, therefore, the classroom, the creative community must take part. So today, we're telling you that you can empower and support teachers to be creative leaders and guides. You can be informed about what's going on in our schools. You can vote on legislation and leaders that reflect your informed opinions. You can keep the conversation going in our community and create your own personal impact on education. We invite you to stay in contact with us and get involved in Nashville by signing up at rnashville.org, a new project aimed at engaging the community with our schools. Thank you. Thank you.